Hey, welcome back. Now for this video, I'm going to be covering phase one, and I had outlined all of this in the previous tutorial. So at the end of that, we had downloaded a whole bunch of tools, and hopefully you downloaded a copy of Ubuntu Server, which gave you an ISO file. Now I know I covered this last time, but I'm going to quickly recap it anyway. So if we go to our desktop, and this could be in your downloads folder or wherever it is, let's say you wanted to put that ISO image of Ubuntu server onto a USB drive to make it bootable. In that case, we used this little utility called UNet Bootin, which we had downloaded. So if we run this, we'll just select yes. Okay, once that opens up, you want to make sure you have a USB drive already in your computer. So let's say we go here to my computer and we can see this one is being labeled as disk J. So I want to go down here. Uh, they give you two options. At the top, you can select a distribution, and it has some preset settings for you. But we can just go ahead down here, select disk image. We want to use an ISO. And then here we can select where that file is. It might be in your downloads folder. For myself, I have it somewhere else on my computer. So. We'll just go to Linux, Ubuntu, Server. So here is our Ubuntu 12.04 Server Edition 64-bit ISO file. So we'll select that and select Open. And now here you want to make sure we want to use USB drive. And this is important. Make sure you select the correct drive letter because if you select the wrong one, you're going to end up overwriting some files that you probably want. So I had double checked and this is our J drive. And now I would select OK. I'm not going to actually go through with it because I already have something on there that I want. But you'll let that run its course. Now, alternately, if you wanted to use the CD or DVD method, we said you could use a program called DeepBurner. So if we go to that and open it up, it'll prompt you for one of these choices. We want to burn an ISO image file, so we'll select that and go to next. And now down here you want to select again that file that you had downloaded. So Ubuntu 12.04 server. We'll select that and open. Now just make sure that you have the correct DVD or CD burner selected here. Put a blank disk in and then go up here to the top and select burn ISO. When all of that's finished you'll now have a bootable CD or DVD, or if you use the other method, a USB drive. So now once we have that, we can go ahead and actually install it to our new computer. Now obviously I can't record my screen on a fresh install, so I ended up using my GoPro camera, which is why it has kind of a fisheye look to it. But I'll walk through that now. Now right when you start your computer, you can go into the BIOS settings and select your boot options and just make sure that either your USB or your DVD CD-ROM drive is placed ahead of your hard drive. Let me just skip ahead here. The other thing you can do on some computers when it first pops up here, you'll see an option for booting from menu. And now it'll give you the options of what you want to boot from. You can just select the USB drive or your DVD drive. And you should get a screen like this. So we're going to install Ubuntu Server. Just select whatever is appropriate for you. English, United States, works for me. Now this you don't really need to do. You can have it detect your keyboard automatically.
Now, if you already have the computer hooked up to the network with an Ethernet cable, you'll get to this point and you want to specify a host name. This is the name that'll be available to identify your computer on your network. You can put in something shorter than this. I'm just doing this to kind of differentiate it from the rest of the computers on my network. So now you want to type out your name and your username and then here you want to put in your password. So whatever you do, obviously if this is at home, you can just write down your password in a little notebook and keep it in a secure place. This way nobody can find it or snap pictures and have your entire password list. It's not really good practice in a more work environment or elsewhere to write down all of your passwords because it's kind of a security violation, but at home, feel free to do that. This way you don't forget. Now we're not gonna encrypt our home directory and select your time zone. Okay, in this situation, and this is kind of a newer option, but you can use what's known as logical volume management. And generally, I don't really use this. Uh, I'm more used to managing my partitions using something called Gparted, which we'll use later on, actually, when we start to install Windows. Um, you can use this, and you might have to use other tutorials later on. So I'm going to go ahead and select this Use Entire Disk. I'll just note, if you had other operating systems, if you had Windows already on there, that would wipe out your previous installs. So here you can review all these changes, go over to Yes and hit Enter. And now you'll actually start writing information to the hard drive. Okay, at this point, it's asking if you have an HTTP proxy set up, and in most cases, you probably don't. If you know that you have one, then you can set it up. Otherwise, just hit enter and leave the line blank. So at this point, it's going to pop up with a window in a second and ask us to install a couple of different packages if we want. And since we're setting up Ubuntu Server, it's going to make sense for us to use it as a web server later on. So I'm going to go ahead and select the LAMP package, which is, again, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And that'll allow us to start creating web pages or websites later on or interact with a database and do a whole bunch of other stuff. So you can actually leave it blank and install all of those packages at a later point. Actually, before we get there, it's asking if we want to configure automatic updates, which you can do, but in some cases, and most of the time it won't be a problem, but in some cases, if you automatically have updates it can break certain things that rely on packages that are no longer working compatibly with each other. So for my case, I'm not going to install the automatic updates. You can just do this manually every couple of days or every week. So we'll go ahead and just select no updates in this case. Okay, so this was the software selection I was talking about. And in our situation, we're just going to use the LAMP server, and we want to install this OpenSSH as well. And what this does is allows us to connect 
to our server remotely, either from other computers, be it Windows or Linux, inside of our own network, or we can open up the firewall later on and allow ourselves access from outside of our home network. So if you're on vacation, if you're at work or at school or at somebody else's house, you could actually connect to your server and do some work on it. So those are the only two we're going to install for now. And you can hit tab to get back to the continue and hit enter. And now it'll continue to install all of those packages for us. And at this point, it's asking us to input a password for the root, the administrative account for MySQL. That's the database. So just go ahead and put in a secure password. And again, you can write this down in your notebook if you want to keep track of it. Just make sure you keep that in a secure location. So you input that password twice and hit enter, and it's going to continue to install. Okay, here it's going to pop up and ask us, uh, this is the only operating system that it sees installed on the computer. Do you want to install the Grub bootloader? So we can go ahead and do that. Just hit enter for the yes option. And we'll explain and see this working later on. So now it should finish up the installation. And here it says the installation is complete. Make sure you remove either the USB drive or the disk from your tray and hit enter to restart it. If you don't take it out, then it might restart the, restart the installer and try to reinstall another copy of Linux. So just take that out and let it boot up normally now. And we saw Grub pop up for a second. Okay, if everything went well, you should now see this login prompt. It's going to ask you for your name and, again, your password. And if you input it correctly, you should now see a screen that looks like this. So at this point, we actually have a fully working copy of Ubuntu Server. And in a later tutorial, we'll begin actually working with Linux and Ubuntu to see how all this works. So for the next tutorial, we're actually going to go ahead and take a copy of Windows 7 and install it as a dual boot right alongside this. And there'll be a couple of things that we have to do to actually get it to work properly. So check out that next tutorial.